This video presents the assembly programming of the 80 Mega 328 serial port to display characters on the Arduino IDE serial monitor. We program the serial port of the 80 Mega 328 in order to transmit or receive data using synchronous or asynchronous modes, USART. In synchronous mode, Data is transferred from the microcontroller to an uh, I.O. peripheral such as analog to digital converter, EEPROM and so on. In a synchronous mode the microcontroller connects to a computer through the COM port. The AT Mega 328 has five programmable USART registers. The data register, three control registers and the baud rate register. We'll begin with the baud rate register, which is made of two 8-bit registers, the low register and the high register. The first 12 bits of this register are used to set the baud rate. These three bits are not used, while this bit here is used to select between either the baud rate high register or the control and status register C. But on the AT Mega 328, this bit is not defined, so we can set it to zero. This is the equation used to calculate the baud rate, given the system clock frequency, which is 16 uh, megahertz, and X is the 12-bit value. So for a baud rate of 9600, the value of X is approximately 103. And this is the assembly code needed to initialize the serial port for a baud rate of 9600. Here we are clearing register R0, it means that the content of R0 is 0. And we are copying R0 into the baud rate high, it means we are clearing this register. And then we are copying the 12-bit value 103 into register R24 and then the value of R24 into the baud rate low. The user data registers enable the transmission or reception of bytes over the serial port. For transmission, the byte is sent over the data bus to the transmit data buffer TXP, and then the data is sent to the transmit shift register where a start bit and a stop bit are added, and then the frame is serially shifted out via the TXD pin of the microcontroller. In a similar manner, data coming from a peripheral is serially fed into the receive shift register via the RXD pin of the controller. And then the byte is transferred to the receive data buffer, RXP, and then put on the data bus to go to the destination register. As an example, let's say we have a byte in register R18 we want to transmit to a serial uh, peripheral. So we use the instruction STS which is stored direct to data space and the destination operand here is the UDR register. But before we can issue this instruction we have to make sure that the TXB register here is empty. And then once it is we can then issue the instruction and transmit the byte. The USART has three control and status registers. Registers A, B and C. We'll begin with register A, which is basically a status register that contains eight flag bits that indicate the status of the USART. We'll focus on this uh, flag here, which is the USART data register MT flag. And when this flag is set, it means that the TXB register is empty and ready to receive new data. As I mentioned earlier, before we can transmit a byte to a destination peripheral, we have to make sure that register TXB is empty, and we can do that by checking the status of this flag. One indicates it's empty. And we can use this loop here to check the status of the flag. First, we need to copy the byte in control status register A into register R17 for example and then we check the status of the data register empty flag by using the instruction SBRS which is skip if bit in register is set. If the flag is not set this instruction will be ignored 
and the jump will be executed and we go back and check the status of the flag again until the flag becomes set meaning the txp register is empty then this instruction will be executed and the next instruction will be skipped and we jump to this instruction here which is to send the byte to the destination peripheral control and status register b is mainly used to enable the usart receiver and the usart transmitter and these three bits here enable the interrupt capability of usart which is not covered in this video these two bits allow the usart to transmit a 9-bit character instead of 8 which is mainly used for party coding and this is again not covered in this video and this bit here combined with another bit inside the control and status register C is used to set the character size in the frame and as we will see later on that the size of the character can either be 5 bits, 6 bits, 7 bits, 8 bits or 9 bits as an example this piece of code will enable the transmitter and the receiver of the usart and here we are copying into register R24 the set values of uh, Rx enable and Tx enable and uh, the rest are zero so this is equivalent to loading into R24 the byte value 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. and then using the instruction STS to load the control and status register with this uh, byte value finally we have control and status register C which is used to determine other specs of the usarts such as whether we have uh, a synchronous or synchronous communication these two bits determine the parity mode 0 0 means no parity 0 1 is not used 1 0 means even parity 1 1 means odd parity this bit here determines the number of uh, stop bits these two bits combined with the bit in the B register determine the character size based on this truth table so we could have a size of 5 up to 9 in this video we'll focus on having 8 bit character size as an example we will program register C so that we have asynchronous communication no parity coding one stop bit and the character size is 8 so the byte value would be 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 0 now let us recap with this example where we want to initialize the usart for the following specifications 9600 baud rate asynchronous communication character size 8 bits no parity coding one stop bit and we want to enable the transmitter and the receiver of the usart first we need to program the two byte registers of the baud rate low and high so in the high we will put all zeros and in the low we will put the decimal value of 103 to give us the baud rate 9600 then we program register control and status register B so that we enable both the receiver and the transmitter of the usart and then we program uh, control status register C so that we have a synchronous communication character size 8 bits no party coding and one stop bit and this is the assembly code needed to initialize the usart first we need to clear the control and status register A and then we clear the uh, boat rate register H and then we store into the boat rate register L the decimal value of 103 to give us the 9600 boat rate and then we load into the control status register B with the required byte to enable the transmitter and the receiver and then we load into the control and status register see the required byte to give us the rest of the uh, specifications now let's have a quick look at the code in the C part of the code we have uh, two external functions one to initialize the serial port and the other to print a text message so the initialization of the serial port is 
called within the setup once while the print message function is repeatedly executed within the loop function. Inside the S file we have the assembly codes so here we have the code needed to initialize the use art with the specs mentioned earlier. Subroutine print message displays on the serial monitor a text message contained inside a string variable. First we load the message onto the register pair R30 and R31 and we have pointer Z pointing to the first character inside the message. Next we use instruction load program memory to copy the first character onto register R18 and then we check whether the character is a null character which is the end of string if not then this instruction will be ignored and we jump to this loop which checks the uh, the data buffer of the user if it's empty or not if it is then we come to the next instruction where we send the character in R18 to the serial monitor and then we jump to label again and get the next character and repeat the process until we reach the null character which is the end of string where we where this instruction is executed which is branch on equal we jump to label exit and here we have a subroutine delay second which introduces a three second delay and then we return to the loop function within the C code inside the message label and using the ASCII directive we define our string and using the byte directive we define three bytes which are three ASCII values this ASCII value is for new line character this is for the carriage return and this is for the null character so first we are sending to the serial monitor this text and then we are sending the new line then carriage return and then the null character. In my next video, I will program the serial port to display on the serial monitor readings from the analog to digital converter. Thank you for watching.